What's the, like, what's the recording about? Like, what's the, sorry, lesson about? Uh, it's about uh, a parsic. I, I mean, uh, like for uh, not not exactly only about parsing, but uh, uh, monadic parsing uh, in general. Okay. Yeah, I, I still don't know what's a monad, but okay, I'll, I'll listen in until I have to go. <laughs> okay. Nice. Is uh, is Jay still here? Oh yeah, 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 totally. Hi, Jay. Yeah. Hey. How, how's it going? Good, Hi, Jay. Yeah, I don't know that much about Parsec, but um, I always love learning stuff about monads and Haskell, so it should be interesting. Yeah, just to, to set the stage, I'm, I'm maybe the more, most novice Haskell programmer. I, I'm, I'm definitely beyond hello world, but I don't really consider myself a, a good Haskell programmer either. I, and I know a little bit about monads, but, but not a ton. So just to throw that out there. You're about 10 days beyond Hello World, right? I saw your uh, repo for Advent of Code. Yeah, yeah, nice, man. Yeah, that's right. Um, so I have a few slides, and uh, I was thinking that I can, uh, just, we can together build uh, the whole parser from, from scratch from the beginning. That sounds awesome. Because because uh, uh, in the original implementation of Parsec, uh, they, they're using uh, more, more, more complicated structure to 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 store the data. So it's uh, it's unclear to see it directly what what is going on. So cool. So Tomislav, for some reason I can't see like the bottom right corner of your screen. Yeah, yeah. There's probably oh, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. This is a uh, uh, zoom zoom window. Cool. So for 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 to start, uh, uh, what what we have, we, uh, what we have as an input for, from from uh, our parcel, it's it's just like a stream of of something, or like a stream of bytes that uh, are encoded, and we have like a stream of characters, and this can be uh, anything, but it's it's a sequence of of something, and. Uh, when I think of parsers, uh, I'm thinking what what we really want uh, and how we want to express uh, uh, this sequence of, of characters. So we just want to say, uh, okay, I, I I have this like a specification uh, that I want to match. It's it's really like a almost the same thing in, uh, uh, as a match in in uh, in Rolling that you just want to see. Uh, uh, this sequence. So, uh, in in blue, it's just it's it's like a keyword or or something that uh, that is fixed, and we we are searching for uh, for for holes in 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 this sequence. This is like a, a variables. This this is what what we want to extract. Right. Okay. So so just to to make sure I'm with you, like. We know for sure that whenever we're gonna have one of these if things that we're parsing, we know we're gonna have if and a left paren and then some stuff, then a right paren and then more stuff, then an else and finally the last bit of stuff. Yeah. And all the all the times I said stuff, that's what we want to uh, extract out of here and put some structure on, right? Yeah, exactly. And really, uh, the type of the parser will be uh, this stuff parser of stuff, because this is what we want to uh, extract. And, okay. uh, and when, I, uh, when I say a parser, uh, you can think of a parser like a, like a maybe, but this is like a totally s simplification. It's just like a maybe that has value or, or, or nothing, but we can just say, okay, let, let's, let's have only, only uh, just the value. So uh, in, in that sense, the, the maybe and parser are very similar because you, you have maybe of, or something or parser of, of uh, something. And here, I, I, I want to start from the end because uh, our, our fi final goal, uh, uh, if, we, if we see the, the final goal, what we want, uh, uh, then I think it's, it's uh, uh, like a simpler to, to understand how, how parser is working. So uh, in, in BNF syntax, uh, we are really doing the same thing. 
or or uh, uh, in a, in a regex. We are, we are matching the sequence. So in in BNF syntax, uh, it's just uh, it's it's uh, for ex for, um, for example this uh, 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 parenthesis. Uh, just specify this is uh, this is a fixed string. And this is also fixed string, and we have something, and then again, this is like a variable. We have something, and and then the the, the fixed string. So it's in, in, uh, it's a very, very very good way to to specify uh, uh, how this sequence of characters uh, uh, what you want to match. Okay. And and parsec, it's really almost uh, almost the same. Our, our our goal is uh, 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 write something like a, a BNF syntax. So, in the monadic style, uh, we are specifying uh, exactly exactly this uh, 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 this structure. So we say, okay, we want first uh, to match the string if. After that, we want to match uh, a character uh, open parent. After that, we want to match something. And this something we uh, uh, in this case we want to extract. Ah, okay. So you're bi so now you're binding a name to that one. Exactly. Uh, here we can bind like this parent. Mm -hmm. But uh, usually we are not interested in that because this is like a fixed character. Sure. Uh, and, the, and after that, uh, uh, exactly the same. We are we are. Matching sequence by sequence of characters or complicated uh, parser. Sorry? Is P a string or is it like a token? No. P yeah, what's, what's the type of P? Yeah. This P. Mm -hmm. So uh, I didn't specify what is uh, proc. Uh, I, I say proc is. Uh, this is like a recursive structure. So uh, uh, proc is. Uh, uh, I, I was thinking about uh, about the rolling. So uh, everything is a process. So mm -hmm. uh, in in this if statement, uh, process can be uh, like a predicate, but process can be uh, also as uh, then or else. What will happen? And uh, in, in that sense, process is uh, also the. the this structure the same this if l structure or nil process or in any other process so the dot 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 would be something like uh proc send or proc receive or exactly exactly okay and proc this proc send and yeah and this proc send and proc receives are are uh, built in the same way as proc if else they're they're more complicated uh, uh parser built from, okay 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 so one. Let me let me see if I'm understanding this right. So, uh, parsing the if and parsing the left paren is pretty straightforward. Um, then, when we get to that first proc, that it's basically like the if condition there, right? Um, you're you're calling a different parser, which you've down, defined down below on the last line, and it basically tries to parse any process. And the way it tries to parse a process is it first tries to see if if it parses correctly as a proc if else. And if it doesn't, then we try to parse it as a proc nil. And if it doesn't parse correctly as that, we try to go through all the dot, dot, dots. And hopefully it either parses correctly as one of those or else, I don't know, or else what if they all fail? Then we just get a syntax error? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And yeah, I didn't explain to, uh, uh, this combinator. The, this is like a or. So you, you, you said correctly. Uh, uh, you match first one and then the uh, second and then yeah, to, to, the, to the rest. So that's and called they, a combinator? They, yeah. So what uh, is it? Is it too off topic to ask you what is a combinator? Isn't it? No, no. Uh, I, I just want to uh, uh, talk about these combinators because they are, they are the most important. Oh, great. Because uh, in this monadic style, uh, uh, you are using uh, monadic part uh, of, uh, of the parser monadic uh, implementation of the parser. Uh, because of that, 
we are we are using the standard uh, uh, sequencing uh, uh, monadic sequencing because we are in, in in the do block and we're just executing one uh, bind operation uh, after another but you can you can say but this uh, this uh, t uh, doesn't depend on uh, depends on p so we really don't need uh, the 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 monad expressiveness we can we can do it uh, uh, without uh, uh, dependency because uh, in mon monadic style uh, you can have a dynamic flow of uh, of the data because uh, when you execute uh, uh, next sequence, you can you can depend on the previous. So, uh, for example, you can you can have a different kind of parser that accepts a value from the previous one. Oh, and this is how you can change and you can have dynamic flow uh, of the data. Okay, but we we don't have that here, though, right? No. Okay. So, uh, so for this example, uh, uh, I, I want to show you also the uh, applicative version, which which is uh, which uses uh, really only a functor to to specify uh, uh, to to specify the, the, the sequence, and this is why this is static because you cannot depend on the previous one, on, uh, 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 from the result of the previous uh, uh, execution of the parser. Okay, okay, cool. So, so you've shown us the BNF syntax, and then you've shown us the parsec syntax, and now you're going to show us a third alternative, the applicative version, right? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and really, because, because monad is also applicative, and this is how it's defined in Haskell, uh, if you define a monad, you must define uh, uh, implementation for, for applicative. And uh, uh, it might be useful to show the definitions here of like the applicative, like these are applicative functors, right? Exactly. Like yeah, uh, I, I will show the, 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 the whole parser, implementation of the whole parser with, with the, all the, all the, all three methods for functor, applicative, and monad. Cool. So I, uh, this is, uh, this is just an overview so I can dig, dig, dig in, in, the, in into the code. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, I, I just want to show you the, the final goal. Final goal is uh, uh, it's something very very similar to to BNF syntax because this is like a very clear uh, uh, specification. Yeah, it definitely is. So uh, in this applicative style, I, I like this style because uh, it's, um, uh, it's 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 very similar to to uh, like original DNA. <laughs> uh, so this operator uh, are uh, are um, they're they're not defined for for each implementation uh, of the mod. You just uh, for for uh, for each structure, you you only have to implement uh, uh, this is map. Uh, this is ap apply from applicative, and, uh, and 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 the bind that is used uh, for for uh, for monads. And with the implementation of these three functions, uh, you get all the other uh, combinators. Okay, you 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 you, you need uh, uh, specify so, uh, also how to uh, uh, how this alternative uh, function works. This is not co completely clear for for each structure because you you must say how you differentiate uh, what uh, when. Uh, uh, for, for example, for for maybe for uh, for maybe structure, you, you must say how to what to do if you have nothing, and then how to choose the, the next one. Cho do you choose the left or right when, when the left is uh, failing? And uh, this this combinators is, is uh, uh, at least for me, it's very difficult. I I, I, I try to, try to ad understand them how they work as a function. You know, they are receiving. Uh, Two values, and then you know, I, I was trying to understand uh, uh, what is the input values for these functions and what is the output. But uh, I think that it's much easier to just look uh, what what they are representing as as the characters. So uh, the first one says, "Okay, parse uh, if keyword," then uh, use uh, uh, what is on the right. So parse on just 
or go on and just parse the next one. But choose this, this one that uh, the arrow is uh, showing. So do, uh, the, because this uh, combinator is, is saying, okay, uh, uh, I'm, I'm pointing to, to, uh, to, the, to the value that I want, but uh, 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 the other value I want to ignore. So you're, when you say the value you want, you mean like the, the thing that you ultimately want to capture, right? That what's exactly. ultimately going to boil down to proc? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we, 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 don't, just, we don't care to capture the if. We don't. And so yeah. we point to, so what's the association here? Like if you had to add parentheses to this, or is, can you even do that? Yeah. Parentheses uh, can be uh, really, uh, this, it, in, here can be uh, uh, on uh, on multiple places. Oh, interesting! <laughs> you can put it r right here, but you can also put it here. It's not a problem. Like this, I, I think this will work also. Okay. B because uh, uh, you can you can see this as. Uh, two parsers that will will be ignore the left one. Uh, we, we'll be used ju using just uh, the block. Okay. Okay. So let me ask you this question then. Imagine slightly if our syntax were slightly altered. So instead of just like if paren something paren, imagine if it were um, like if paren then the condition right paren and then phi like the backwards if you know like so it's symmetrical. Mm -hmm. How would how would that line that you're on right now? How would that look different to add the last little, the phi bit? So, let's start from here. So you're saying I want to have uh, something after after this. Yeah. Uh, but but only only as a, as a keyword. Only as a keyword, yeah. Not that we need to capture. So just uh, uh, ju just the string uh, pi. Okay. Oh. And this is exactly what I'm what I'm doing in the in the second line. Uh, I I was just uh, uh, extracting this uh, first part mm -hmm. and using here. Oh. oh I'm just okay. combine, combining uh, combining uh, the sequences that I want to match. Got it. Okay. Okay. Th that's all. And. Uh, with uh, these uh, uh, combinators, I'm just saying, okay, use this value, use this value, okay, use this value. And uh, uh, here we are using proc because we are saying from both sides, you know, this is the one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the combinator like visually shows you like kind of where the, it just points to the data that you care about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, so, and this okay. is universal combinators for all monads. You can use maybe monads in, in, in the same sense. So that, that star arrow or arrow star, that's known as a combinator. Those are both known as combinators? Yeah. OK. And uh, we can. We can see uh, uh, what is the, the type of uh, this combinator. It's part of the applicatives. Oh, wow. So if you, if you have uh, uh, something that is uh, applicative, you can use all these combinators that are built uh, from, uh, from this apply method or from functor and from all the others that are uh, higher in the hierarchy. Okay, so the so, type, it takes in, at, what is F in this case? Uh, 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 F is higher kind of type here. It's what? Higher kind of type. Okay. So, so uh, in the container, so it would be like a character of the string part. Oh, like, uh, oh, 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 okay. This, this F represents uh, a parser, a maybe, or either. This is the structure that you have. Okay, and okay. This, so it has to be some monad? Uh, it has to be. Uh, I think it's, it's literally just any. It's any. Um, what do they call it? Like a type constructor or a data. A type type class. Exactly. Uh, type, type constructor. Okay. Uh, type, 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 type constructor. Oh, okay, okay. 
anything okay. that takes one value is input to create a concrete type. Okay. Let me see if there's a fine. It's, it's a part of, uh, uh, of the applicative uh, type class. So it, it must uh, be a functor to, to define applicative. Oh. And, uh, and this is, uh, uh, this combinator is defined in, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, map and uh, apply, apply function. And uh, this combinator means a map, bar, but uh, use uh, this other value. Okay, cool. So, like a mapping, but also uh, uh, you, uh, the, uh, not using the the the, uh, the input value, just the the result. So th th this whole uh, uh, zoo of uh, uh, combinators are, are are all built from from this uh, basic one. For, so okay, and this cool. is very interesting, and, and, and this is uh, uh, in in uh, in other languages you, you cannot do this. You cannot define something uh, or, or uh, uh, something on. Uh, uh, you must have a, a concrete structure to, to define function uh, uh, on this structure. You cannot say, "Okay, I, I will have f for for any uh, uh, for for any kind of uh, this structure." I, I'm not sure if, if this makes sense, but yeah, it's it's starting to. Uh, kind of types are, 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 are really um, uh, difficult to understand. We're, uh, in in in, um, in my example, I will not using uh, uh, kind of types. So okay. we will define okay. the concrete parser, and uh, for this parser, we will define more. Okay. Okay. Cool. No. So. Yeah, uh, what I want to say here, oops. What, what these other uh, characters means. So uh, yeah, in, in this example, uh, in, uh, we are extracting these two, uh, uh, three uh, proc values. So this, uh, these two functions are, are really the same. Uh, we are extracting these two, uh, three values and uh, just packaging in, in, in a tuple. And this is the same thing. We are, uh, uh, in, in Haskell, you can, you can write this uh, just like, a, this is a, a, a tuple construct. Triple. Yeah. And uh, uh, we really want to, to have this as, as a normal function. So uh, uh, this is input function. And we have uh, three values that we want to apply to this function. And uh, these uh, combinators uh, can be seen uh, just uh, with normal function, this will be space. But because, of, uh, be because we are not using uh, uh, plain values, we are using uh, maybe or a parser or we are using some some kind of uh, structure that uh, our our value is inside this structure so with these combinators is there they have the goal to just replace spaces so that uh, calling our functions will look almost the same as normal function so this uh, 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 this function that accepts three values we just want to somehow to say, okay, uh, this is function that accepts uh, three values that we want, but we have like a three maybe values. So we just put these uh, combinators in between and we can directly call uh, this function. Okay, yeah, cool. I, I think I get that. And, and the, yeah, this is true, but uh, for, for, each, uh, for each function and for each uh, applicative monad. So if I were to, if, if you were to lose one of those commas in there, so it, we're just like paren comma paren, now you're expecting like a, a pair instead of a triple, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right, I'm with you. Yeah, I can, I can write to- uh, to like tupleize the, the final structure? Yeah, uh, uh, this function is really uh, like this. Uh, okay, yeah. 
accepting three values and just packaging in, 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 in a triple. So, uh, so the, the dollar is, sign in the angle brackets, the, I'm familiar with the regular dollar sign, uh, the like function application operator. So putting it in the angle brackets, what does that do? I mean, it feels like it's doing a similar thing here. Uh, yeah, this, this, uh, this is uh, why it's uh, very similar to, to this character. <laughs> uh, th th this is a, a functor map in, in Haskell okay. FMAP. Okay. Okay. I could write uh, something like this. This will work also. That, uh, so it's a, a, an infix operator now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, gotcha. So th th this is like a view from uh, uh, for, for from what what we really want and how we want to specify our our our, spec our parsing specification, but uh, how parser is working is really on the on the opposite side. It's like a how to how to take characters and uh, match it. So this really rep represents uh, this only one uh, this parser which uh, uh, parse uh, one character, any character, uh, is really the, 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 the whole parser that uh, we need to implement. Th this is the, like the whole thing. You just ex uh, uh, extract one character and that's it. This is uh, like a parser of character. Okay. And from, from this parser, we will start uh, building the, the everything you, you need. Okay. So what's the what's the diagram? Uh, so uh, when we call this uh, any char parser, uh, we are really want from this stream stream of uh, characters we want to uh, move it from from one character. We want to extract uh, one character and say, okay, we now have this one and the rest. And uh, this is like the first call and the second call. Uh, oh. We are doing the same thing. We are calling the same parser again, and because because the the parser have a, a state, and this really represents the state of the parser. Okay, okay. Let me write this. Yeah, got it. So. We have an internal state that, that we want to capture inside the, uh, our parser. And we want to uh, define this basic, uh, this basic parser of one character. So the only thing that can happen uh, if uh, uh, we can uh, get to the end of the string, so we must count uh, somehow or, 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 or on that case. Because we are extracting one by one, and that's okay. But what will be the uh, result of this parser if we uh, get to the end? Because we are, we are extracting one by one. Mm -hmm. and, uh, when we get to the end, we. Yeah, so it's, it's going it's to be some kind of parse error, I guess, right? Yeah, we, we, we need some kind of way to, to, to say, so uh, this value that we are uh, holding in our parser, we need some kind of way of just saying, uh, okay, is this uh, an error? Or, or we can choose like a special character to say, this character means end of. Yeah, e EOF or EOL or yeah. something. So, okay, now uh, I, I, I was starting to like, explain the structure on, on the slide, but I didn't done it. <laughs> yeah, 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 cool. So I, I want to... create a, a new project. Stack new. What is what is stack? Oh, a stack, a stack uh, is uh, uh, it's a wrapper uh, uh, around uh, 
uh, Haskell Cabal uh, package manager. Oh. But, but it's not only that, it's, um, it has it, 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 uh, its own uh, releases and the uh, packaging uh, of, of the like a, uh, dif different ver version of libraries. So you can have like consistent uh, uh, build for, for your project. Okay. That's, but there is a new option uh, for Cabal, Cabal uh, new build, if you're using this one, maybe. D did you heard about uh, Cabal new build? This is like a new new version of Cabal. Uh, I'm not too sure what you mean. I, it's it's a Haskell tool. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, Cabal. Is, uh, you're using Cabal, right? To to. Cabal. Uh, I I mean, so again, I'm pretty new at this. I generally write my code in a in a file, and then I go to the terminal in GHC file name. Oh, okay. So when you when when you want to package your library or like a. Uh, uh, create the project. Uh, you, you need to use uh, Cabal for uh, for specification of the of the project. Okay, so, so is, is Cabal like is Cabal like the npm of the Haskell world? Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. all right, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, and and the and, and the oh, Cabal okay. is uh, is a package JSON. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I I see. So that that command you just wrote uh, on the terminal just generated like these template files for you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I already, I already tried that. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. And uh, and uh, 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 Visual Studio Code now working with uh, with with the stack uh, and not with the cabal. So, <laughs> and, and, uh, I'm using a, a new language, Haskell language server for for Visual Studio Code. So, okay, all right. I'm not very happy how this works, but it, so sometimes it works and some versions are, are not working, so. Do you use Haskell in your work, Tomislav? Uh, no, no, I'm not using Haskell. It, it, it's more like a, like a research and hobby and. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you see uh, uh, everything on my screen? Should I... Uh, uh, Make my fonts bigger. Uh, I, I can, a little bigger might be nice. I, it's not a blocker though. I can read it. Is it okay like this? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Totally, totally. So, uh, <clears throat> for start, uh, we need uh, we, we need uh, uh, structure for for our parts. And uh, uh, how parser is defined, it's, it's really like um, a state. Uh, uh, it's really, it's, it's really uh, how, how state is uh, usually defined. It's a function from state to a tuple of a result and, and, and the, the, like a, the next state. So I will write this. So our parser. Uh, will be parser of uh, of uh, some kind of result. Let's say race. Oops. And because th this is the data structure, so I would say data constructor is uh, the same name. And now I, I want to say, okay, I have this function. From uh, in our case, uh, we we are using state uh, uh, like. We, we, we don't want to have uh, this as a parameter, our state. Our state is just string, because we are, we are par parsing string. OK. So we have string as a state, and we have function from this state to uh, result and the, the resulting state. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, so the any care example you showed, like we took in the string a b c d e, and then what it gives out is the result is the character a, and then the second half of that tuple is b c d e. Yeah, and uh, this is what I, I I wanted to show here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're just uh, uh, extracting something. In this case, this is uh, uh, like a parser of one ch uh, one character, but. Uh, we can have different parts which can have different results. As a, as a combination of uh, this, this the basic one, of course. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
And so we can, we can write uh, uh, this uh, uh, basic, uh, uh, like the, the, first, uh, the first parser of parser of one character. And we, we will just uh, uh, create. A, uh, we will just create a parser when, where we can extract uh, uh, this one character. Yeah. So we must we must create a parser. I will using this syntax. Is is, is uh, this familiar to you? Yeah. Uh, so it's parser applied to this lambda function. Yeah, and here is a, uh, like a body of, of, the, of the function. This, this function is I, I'm really defining uh, this one. So this S is, is a state, this is string. And now I want uh, to, to uh, return something like this. Yeah, OK. So I want to extract uh, this S. So yeah, but I have. I have two uh, two different uh, possibilities. So let me define this. Oh one. yeah, the one possibility is that it's empty. Yeah. Okay. I will de define this uh, uh, function here. And we have first uh, first uh, case. So. This is the, the, the case where, where, where we want to, uh, to say something else because this is like an end, end of string. So I will be modifying this result. Uh, so we will not only uh, return just result, uh, we will return either. So we can specify re uh, uh, result, but also on the left side, uh, string uh, as, as an error. So we can just okay. say, okay, uh, this is error. It's, it's not correct. So here, now we can return uh, so, something that, uh, that, that uh, has uh, uh, error, error, uh, error string. So I will say, okay, this is a left end of string. And I can return this. Uh, Empty, uh, empty string, because we don't have uh, anything to to compare. Yeah. Okay. And, and other case is when we just uh, use the the head of the list. And so then we just return x comma x's. Exactly. But uh, yeah, oh, right. Right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you're correct completely. What did I wrong? CHR versus CH. Oh. And now, now we have uh, like this this basic uh, uh, parser that we can use for for anything else. Okay, so so. Okay, so um, I'm looking at line five. So any uh, any care has type parser of care, which that is referring back to line three, I guess. Like you're substituting the the character in for res for the result. Exactly. Okay, got it. So then so then this particular part, this particular like any care thing is going to give us. It's a parser that takes in a string and returns either a uh, string or a character and the remaining string. Yeah. Okay, got it. And then so so parser of next the I guess the only thing I'm not a hundred percent clear on is like what is next ch or why did we introduce that? Oh it's it's it's, it's uh, just a function. Th this it's is function from sorry? It's a function. Okay. It's 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 a dysfunction. Oh, uh, oh. Because this is just a data constructor, which accepts uh, this parameter. Yeah, got it. I'm with you. And, and parameter is a function. 
Got it. And in, in our case, uh, 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 this is function from string uh, to either of string and result and uh, the, the new state. Okay, okay, cool. And so uh, if we were to, we don't have to explicitly define a type for next ch because it can be inferred, but it, if we were to define it, it would be from, um, from a string. Oh, you did it up top. You did it on line three. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Okay, I'm with you totally now. Um, and then what's the left and right constructors? What are they doing? Uh, I'm just packaging uh, uh, this result in uh, two different ways. So left and so right go with oh, either. Yeah, yeah. I must, I must show you what is either. Uh, can I say? Come on. This uh, left and right are constructors oh. for, uh, for this data type. Okay. So uh, this data type is uh, a, a little more complicated than, than maybe. It's have the, the, the value, it's a right. This is like a just in, in maybe, but uh, other case is not nothing, but also, uh, uh, as, uh, 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 but also accepts a, a parameter. So you have either left or right. Usually right is the, the, the value that you want and left is usually the error. So, mm. so yeah, so right is, right is exactly like you're just. And then, or it, yeah, and left is like you're nothing except instead of just being nothing, it also takes, in, in our case, some error message, but in general, just yeah. some parameter. Uh, yeah, exactly. It accepts, uh, in our case, string because we say, okay, error is a string. Seems weird to even have to discern between the left and right at all. At all. Um, oh, sorry, sir. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of just thinking out loud. Like, why? Why do you have to discern between left and right versus just like returning one of the two values? Uh, like this. Uh, I mean, I know that wouldn't work, but. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, we we yeah, need. Uh, why does either exist when maybe exists? Uh, because we, we don't want uh, this other value to just be nothing. We want to uh, uh, we want to specify some uh, another value. All uh, right. Yeah, that makes sense. So, uh, Thomas Lav, is it? I I think this is the case. Can you just confirm for me? And any time that you use a maybe, you could also refactor that to use an either, and then with left, you just instead of nothing, you return like left unit. But exactly. you can't go the other way. Like if you've used an either, you can't reduce it to a maybe because maybe doesn't allow a parameter in the nothing. Yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly. cool. They're, they're both have uh, two different values. But yeah, either have, uh, has this left value or also as uh, another part. Okay, cool. Uh, now we can specify uh, for example, th th this is like a help helper function. So, uh, helper function to, to say, okay, uh, how to really parse uh, and use uh, uh, this parser. So, I will define parse, uh, uh, parse function. And so, what, we, what will... we've already built something that we could use and like write a, at least write a unit test for though, right? Just w even without yeah. parse? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and this parse, uh, what, what I want with this parse? Uh, I want to extract this uh, parse function, right? And uh, just return it. <laughs> because the, the, this is the parse. When you, when you put oh. the string inside this parser, you will get the result and the, 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 the next state. So uh, let's use this parser. <laughs> Yeah, I, okay, I see now. <laughs> you, you know I'm just going to ask for a crash course on Cabal next, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. <clears throat> Parsec. 
So what, what is in lib.hs? Oh, it's nothing. It's, uh, it's just get generated from, uh, from the project. From, okay. From the template. Okay. Uh, I, I want I want to cre create uh, like a project from the scratch, so you don't so you, so you see that I don't have anything. Mm -hmm. in mind. And uh, now we can we can uh, we can we can use this any char parser. So uh, parse any char, and now we can uh, uh, specify an input. So before you press enter, I'm if you press enter right now, I would expect well any. Okay, well now that there's something, yeah, yeah, with the empty string, it should, the, any char should come back with left end of string, and then... Yeah, you're right. And, oh, and, they, oh. and we're just returning an uh, empty string, because... What if we, um, what if you just called any care directly instead of calling parse? What does that do? Uh, a, 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 any char uh, is uh, packaged up inside uh, this parser uh, data constructor. Uh -huh. So this parse is just extracting uh, the function inside uh, the parser. So are you saying because it's in a module we can't call it directly, or? Uh, let's write something like this. So this is the, the, the simplest uh, the simplest data. This is just an ID. Mm -hmm. But uh, because it's defined as a data, uh, we, we must uh, uh, we, we cannot just e extract this parameter uh, from, 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 from the data. So uh, We say, okay, I have this uh, my ID. So we have a number inside uh, the, this data, uh, this data package, this data. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. uh, when we want to uh, sum up these two numbers, we cannot because uh, my ID is 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 not uh, integer. It's, uh, it's, pack, it's packaged in, in inside this ID. Ah, okay. Let, this is what I wanted to see. Okay, so the type of my ID. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, it's just in, inside that box, basically. Inside the box. Yeah. This is structure like like a maybe. This is like just in, in the maybe. It's just it's, it's, it's put it inside. Maybe you must somehow extract it. But uh, yeah. with maybe you have uh, this is a sum type. You have two different options. So you cannot just easily extract because uh, they, they can be nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but okay. In, in, but in, in case of, uh, of uh, th this structure that have only one value, you can just say an ID. Th this will just uh, extract these uh, values outside. Because uh, it's, it's only one option. We can write this function. I, I will show you uh, uh, how how else can be uh, this uh, written in Haskell. So let me say plus. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, is it because you reloaded? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't define my ID. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's, it's it's just extracting value. Well, uh, maybe uh, I can write this. Okay, cool. So I, I totally I totally get what line five does now. That oh I it, even without that I I totally get it now. But like okay. my question I guess is why did we why did we use this parser box in the in the first place? This oh, is because it's a great type question. Structure. No no no. This is great question and, and okay. uh, uh, I didn't say why because okay. yes uh, in, in 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 this case. Uh, we can write uh, everything like like this. We can say, okay, I will, I will not this defined uh, as the, as a data. I will this defined uh, uh, as, as as a type synonym, mm -hmm. and I can just use this one. Yeah, that 
Th thank you for making my question clear and concise. That is what I was trying to ask. Yeah, and you can do this. Okay. But, but you cannot define an instance of type class uh, for a type alias. Instance. You must have uh, you must have concrete type if you want to define, for example, a functor for this uh, data structure. Mm. Basically, you can't combine it with other parser types. Uh, no, uh, I mean uh, we we must. Uh, it, it, uh, I, I said that uh, uh, we need to define to, to use all of these uh, combinators. We need to define. Uh, uh, this, uh, this our parser as instance of functor, applicative, and, and, and the mode. And uh, we cannot write this instance uh, if uh, this data structure is only an alias and not the concrete type. So I, I, I will try this. I will say instance uh, functor of parser. So this will be the definition, but we cannot do this. Where T is not a synonym. Okay. So we really need a, a real structure, not, not on a synonym. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm kind of starting to wrap my head around that. I, I don't think we should get too hung up on it at this level though, probably. Okay, uh, uh, can I show you how? Else oh yeah, 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 definitely. How can else this, this be defined as a as a new type? Uh, new type is almost the same as defining data structure, uh, but is not uh, but it doesn't cost anything uh, in the in the in the uh, in the real time. So it's 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 only a matter of uh, co uh, compiler. Only compiler knows about uh, the new types. So they are, uh, and, and these new types, it's really like a specific version of, 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 a, of a data, of a data structure, uh, but can only have one, uh, uh, oh. one, one constructor. So there's no, there's no putting an or on line five, that's not valid. Uh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Put the vertical line and then another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We cannot do this. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, but yeah. but with line three, we with data, we could do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Oh, this is cool. I've never encountered new type before. Uh, and they have special syntax uh, for extracting value. So, hmm. Uh, you're just uh, naming the the extract function. This parse. Oh, it's, it's really, oops, uh, I can write this in a new type way. So everything is the same, but here I will say, okay. So now you'll unid colon. Exactly. So I don't have to specify this another function. Yeah. Uh, something. Oh, and here I, I will use uh, the same thing uh, as the data. I'm just specifying data constructor because this is data constructor. Cool. And uh, usually new type is used uh, if you have only like only one constructor and uh, you don't want to have any um, uh, any performance uh, cost uh, in, in the in the runtime. Mm. Oh, so, oh, interesting. So when we did it with data on line three, there's a like minor performance price for yeah. the unboxing or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, the, comp uh, the compiler in runtime that uh, uh, he knows about this, uh, uh, th this uh, data structure. Okay. So I will, I will use uh, this new type because it's like, Compiler evaluation data would be like runtime evaluation. Yeah, it's it's a matter of a boxing. I'm, I'm I'm not sure exactly, but yeah. In in runtime uh, doesn't have to do uh, so much uh, boxing unboxing. I think. Yeah. 
So we have oops, this basic parser. We can, for example, uh, usually. Oh yeah, I, I didn't show you how to parse. So, character. Yeah, a naturally good one. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Nice. So we get uh, uh, this first character and just the the rest. And in 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 Parsec you have like a richer structure for for each of these. You have a state which is not only string; it's more complicated. Uh, the track position, uh, and uh, and uh, either is doesn't have only string as an error. You have different kinds of errors, but the concept is, is the same. Yeah, great. And uh, the next uh, thing that we want, uh, we want to somehow say which character, character we want. So the, the next function is, uh, is uh, um, satisfy. which will accept uh, some kind of predicate for this uh, character that we want to check. And we want to uh, return a Boolean. Is it true or false for, for this character that we recognize? Mm. Is it OK or not? And we will return parser character. Mm. So, wait, 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 hold on. Why, do, why is it any care on line 12? Oh. Okay, 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 cool. It's my Visual Studio code. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't look whether right. Uh, <laughs> so this f uh, uh, is, is uh, this predicate function. So we need to... Uh, we need to extract uh, uh, this any char. We want to use uh, this character and create another parser with, with the result. So we, we want somehow to, uh, this A as a result of any, any char, we want to somehow transfer to another parser and uh, decide on this value what we, got, what we want to do. And this is really a, a, a dynamic flow of, uh, uh, of, of this data. Because we, want, we, we must per first parse uh, this one character, and then, and then this, this next parser will, will uh, decide what to do on the, on the result of the previous one. So we must use uh, uh, monad in, 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 uh, in this situation. So I will say, OK, first I want to parse any character. Then I, I want to bind uh, uh, to this next, uh, uh, next function. And bind function is it's really uh, It's really uh, this uh, uh, monad bind function. Is this is this make sense? So M is some monad. Oh, I mean, yeah, I've seen this before. This is starting to stretch my understanding of monads. Okay, I want to go a little into that. But uh, this is this is basic. In, uh, uh, this is one of two ways how monads are implemented. You can implement it with the join, you can implement it with the, with the bind. This is two, two, two different implementation. Uh, it's one of the, wait, wait, I missed a word there. It's one of the ways that, what? The, the, the monad is defined. Defined, the, okay, got it, got it. De defined, exactly, yeah. So that one, this one is bind, and then is that other one right below it? Uh, uh, it's usually, it's usually uh, not uh, written Let me see where is the join function. It's not defined here. 
Hey guys, this has been uh, really, really useful, but I gotta go. Okay. Yeah, okay. Is it 11? Is it the hour? Yeah, cool. So, uh, Tomislav, I don't know, it looks like it's late at your place, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. it's getting dark, yeah. <laughs> do, do you want to continue now, or do you want to have another session sometime? Or I, I want to be mindful of your time. It's very generous of you to, to teach us all of this. Uh, if you like, I can, I can show you something more, but yeah. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm, down, I'm down to hang for a little while, and it'll, it'll be on YouTube, if, Jay, if you feel like getting back to it later. Yeah, definitely, I will. All right. Cool. And uh, yeah, we we can make another session also. Yeah. Definitely. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks. This has been this has been really cool. Yeah. See you later, man. See you. Bye bye. bye. Uh, I, I want to tell you more about uh, the the monad and uh, how how they are implemented, but uh, I want to also uh, say to you something about higher kind of types. So. Uh, here, I, I, I will just mention uh, how, uh, why we need to define this function, but I, I will not go too, too much in, in detail about the monads. Okay. Uh, the most important thing is just to see uh, what is the type of uh, this function. Uh, so this M, in our case, is a parser. Okay. This is like a like a parameter, and we are saying, okay, our parser uh, is M. So the 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 first thing uh, is uh, is the concrete this uh, input parser, and in our case, this is any char. That's what the M is any char. Yeah, uh, M is a parser, A is a char. Oh, this is our parameter. Yeah. Uh, oh, right, right, right. Okay. Uh, so the, the next thing uh, is uh, this uh, uh, function that uh, depends uh, of, of, on the value of the of the of the uh, first argument. So we have parser character, and we are we are going to supply another function uh, that will that will get as a parameter uh, this uh, character from from the first parser. Mm -hmm. we, we are combining the result of the of, of the parser, uh, and we will we will uh, return another parser inside this function, and we will get the result this parser that we, we return. So, uh, in in a sense, uh, we, are, we are we are having parser, and with this function we are uh, creating another parser, and returning this one. So, so uh, we are cre creating uh, uh, hierarchy of our parser. We have, we have parser inside our parser. So in our case, A and B are both, both char. Yeah, yeah, they will okay. be more, both char. All right. So uh, let me write uh, this. Uh, Oh, okay, and you're using you're using that bind operator as an infix here, right? Okay, so so M A, yeah. I'm getting it now. So M A is is any char. So now you've got to give it something that takes in a, a char and gives back a parser of char. Yeah. And finally, it will give back. Yeah, that same parser of char. Let's call this next uh, next p because uh, this re returns uh, the, the whole parse, and we are having this uh, a. No instance for my head parse. Oh yeah, yeah. I cannot, I cannot use uh, uh, this bind operator because uh, our parser is still not uh, the monad because we didn't implement the the, the whole uh, the all all the instances uh, for for monad. So okay, I will I will I will uh, define this uh, as as undefined. So just just to uh, 
uh, satisfy the type, type checker. Yeah, I got it. And for applicative, we must specify uh, this apply function. And so is, is that uh, that thing on line 20, how do you pronounce that operator or combinator or whatever it is? Uh, apply. Apply, that's apply. And is that apply. at all related to the ones we looked at earlier that were just like star right arrow or left arrow? Yes, yes. this is the same. Okay. Oh, you've got one there. Okay. And so what does it mean when the arrow points both ways? Uh, uh, so I don't have a good answer. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, <laughs> cool. This is like a basic operator defined in, in this way. Most operators have this like a... Uh, both, the both of them. Both ways, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yes. I'm not sure how to, how to uh, think about the, this star here. It, it really says uh, this is first parameter. I'm, 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 uh, this is like a, 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 a map. Yeah. This is yep. F map. But yep. when you have when you have uh, a function with uh, more with more uh, arguments, uh, then you must somehow say, okay, I'm I'm, I'm F mapping. Not only uh, uh, this one ar argument, uh, I have. Uh, uh, I have I have more arguments to this function, so you you, you just add uh, uh, this um, combinator for for each uh, argument that you have. Yeah. All right. Roger that. Uh, for, for for example. Uh, So now, if if I want to uh, if I want to use uh, this maybe value, I can say plus uh, oh, this is going to be a helpful example example for me. Uh, so ma ma has type maybe int or I guess. Num a maybe a at this point, right? Uh, I will show you types. Come on. Oh, this doesn't compile. Yeah, and th this is maybe. Maybe okay, maybe integer. So now it's definitely not a, a float or whatever. Yeah, yeah, de definitely. It's, it's defined as a, as, a, as a whole number. Okay, so plus plus is just a regular old thing that takes in two numbers and adds them together. That is very clear. And so now 29 and 30 is where I'm about to learn something. So our res is for result, right? And so you're applying plus to. I mean, so I guess I get that, or I'm. Uh, Intuiting that the answer is supposed to be 82 here, or is it just 82? 84? 84, yeah. But is it 84 or is it just 84? Well, it has type maybe integer, so it's just 84. It's just, yeah. But because it must be uh, uh, maybe. Because mm -hmm. the, we are, we, the, the whole expression is a maybe. Yeah, We are right. inside the maybe. We, we are not extracting them. We are just mapping. We, we are playing inside the maybes. Playing inside the maybes. Okay, so all this is happening inside the maybe monad, right? This can be uh, uh, nothing. What what will be the, the result now? So now the whole thing's going to be nothing. Of course. But you don't have to specify this every, anything uh, anywhere. You you're just uh, supplying these two uh, combinator here, and that's it. It's it's almost the same as applying directly uh, these two values. If, for, if this is like a real, a real values. Real 
so uh, you are thinking about uh, this uh, uh, these operators as uh, you want to write uh, functions in the same way mm -hmm. but uh, 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 they are inside the in some, in some in, uh, inside some kind of structure but because uh, they are functors and applicative because uh, maybe it's a functor and, and applicative you can just insert oh, okay the, okay okay so that that machine. operator it's called a combinator right that you have highlighted yeah yeah that combinator knows how to pull the 42 out of the maybe because maybe is uh what a, what'd you say it was applicative yeah okay oh so somewhere wherever they define the maybe monad they assign some behavior to this dollar sign combinator yeah, I can show you that. Um, so the, uh, this is a combinator for uh, maybe capital M. Oh. Okay. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, alias for uh, fmap. So when we when we look a functor, it's an alias for fmap. Okay. For fmap, yeah. Uh, so uh, when we have definition for uh, functor, maybe. But where is this? Oh, here. It says uh, if if you have a function and you have a value, uh, how to apply this function to this value? Because you, oh, you no. are thinking, okay, I, I I have a function on on a value inside my structure. And yeah. You, you you know how this structure is is built. So you you specify the functor. Uh, if you have a function for uh, for a value inside uh, this structure, you you just need to specify only once uh, how you uh, apply the function inside, and that's it. Yeah, then, this is part when you say you 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 say this only once, and it's it's clear. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. Okay, so so we're looking here at instance functor maybe, and so like it's saying so the the top part is saying if I try to map any. Wait, F, F, the F and F map stands for functor? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Probably, yeah. Okay. If I try to F map anything, it doesn't matter what. If I try to map it to nothing, I just get back nothing again. Yeah. And if I try to map it to a just value, well, then we just pop it inside the, the maybe monad. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah we I'm are starting. extracting from just and uh, applying the function and again uh, putting everything in just. Yeah, so. got it. Cool. And, 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 and the factor is always like that. So in, in, in our case, uh, it, it, it will be uh, very similar. So, uh, so, all right, so looking back at line 31, the, you said the, the, the dollars, uh, Oh yeah, third. Sorry, thirty is what I meant. You said the dollar sign is is a, an alias for f map, right? So that's the same as plus f map m a star nothing. Yeah, and uh, for me it was uh, helpful to to write this uh, in, in in different style. So we can say, okay, how how this will look in in some other language which doesn't have infix. Uh, uh, the operator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. So you must write something like this. Uh, this too. And after that, let me see. I'm not sure if uh, this applied uh, have uh, 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 prefix function. So yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll write it like, like this. Okay, so this, so 34 is the same as 30. Yeah. 
And, uh, and so now you're F mapping the, the regular old addition function plus, hmm, two MA, is that a way to make a sentence? F mapping plus to MA? Uh, yeah, and this plus uh, accepts two, uh, two arguments. So what, what, will, what will happen when, when we uh, F map uh, uh, this plus with the two arguments uh, on, on, uh, on only one argument? Uh, so it's partially applied then, right? Yeah, so uh, we cannot just map uh, over this partially applied function. Mm -hmm. we need, we need uh, another function, not F map, but this uh, like a, a little more complicated uh, functor which accepts uh, uh, which accepts this first function inside the structure. Oh. So, uh, so in, 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 in a functor, in F map, uh, this first function is just a regular function, A to B. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, in applicative style, in, uh, in apply uh, function, this is almost the same, but this first function is inside the F, like this, okay. uh, uh, the second argument. So we need to extract uh, uh, from, this, uh, from this first argument also, not only from the second. So in, in our case here, uh, we, oh. are, we, are, uh, we are having, how can I get the result? result? Oh, here. So here uh, we have this uh, integer to integer function inside the main. So we must use applicative to extract this uh, function from the, from the just because uh, uh, this function integer to integer, this partially applied plus will be inside the just after the F map. Yeah, yeah, I got you. So uh, with applicative, you can extract another parameter and just apply it to the function. And this is, this is why it's, it's, it's just, uh, it's also a functor, that, but it's, uh, 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 just, just a regular functor with more, uh, uh, with more parameters. Yeah. Okay. This is actually starting to make some sense. There's a lot of like little pieces I have to get my head wrapped around here, but I, I think I'm starting to get it. So, so here's my next question for you. What, what is the relationship between applicative and monad? Uh, or are they, are they like totally different? Th they're both type classes, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, you can you, you can have many different uh, type classes. But uh, here, uh, uh, this three one that uh, I, I mentioned in functor, applicative, and monad, mm -hmm. they give you uh, uh, lots of this uh, combinator that are defined with only uh, with uh, with only dependency to, to these uh, type classes. Okay. This, this is right. like a basic one. Okay. And, uh, there is a very, very good paper uh, of uh, this guy, Connor McBride, who uh, I think he, he, uh, he, uh, he was first to, to say something about applicative, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that. Yes, this applicative programming with uh, effects. And uh, oh, nice. here, here, here explains uh, the relation with uh, with the monads and. Uh, can you can you discord me that link? Yeah, yeah, sure. This is really good. I um, I I guess we got a little away from parsing, but I feel like I learned a ton just now. Uh, but this is not really uh, away from parsing. Okay. Oh, great. Really, but it's 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 in, in the core of uh, of a parsing. Okay. Because yeah. You're using these combinators and monad for for uh, combining uh, parsers. So it's really the 
in, in, in the core of Parsi. Yeah, great. Okay, cool. So I will, I will uh, just create another fake instance for, uh, for a monad. And we must define a bind. And we must define the return. And we return, uh, it's, it's just to call uh, uh, this applicative pure. And uh, in, in, a, in a Haskell, uh, they're, they're, uh, they're combined together. You, you, you asked me how, what is the relationship between monad and, and, and applicatives. And, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I read that uh, they really didn't, uh, they're, they're, uh, they're not, uh, they don't they have to be uh, combined, but they're usually defined as uh, uh, monad uh, have dependency uh, on applicatives. Okay, okay, so, so like you're saying, if we're being totally rigorous, they, they're just separate things, but in practice, they often come together? Yeah, b because, uh, uh, I read that because of lots of interesting uh, functions that you can define if you have dependency on the applicative. Okay. And yeah. Cool. I, I I want to show you also uh, for a pure script. In pure script, uh, for for me, this is like a more. Uh, they they define the, the, this whole hierarchy like a more more uh, more granular. What is what is pure script? Oh, pure, pure script uh, is uh, Haskell on the JavaScript. Oh, what? Yeah, th th this is like great, uh, but uh, uh, package manager is is, is horrible. Okay. <laughs> so, and and they 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 are, they are changing the, the code is not uh, in, in uh, like a pop, uh, version one release so some some projects for for other than code I have some some code before and I was I wanted to, to like start again and I couldn't build the project so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's 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 really great and they 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 are uh, separated all of these things uh, in in. In, in, in a more granular way. So for, for example, for applicative, uh, they also have uh, apply separately. So ap applicative, uh, so pure script is not completely Haskell, but it's al almost uh, almost the same. For mm -hmm. example, arrow is in, in different direction. But yeah. uh, th this is dependency and this is what we are defining. So uh, to define applicative, uh, we are depending on uh, apply. And I'm not sure if apply is defined here. Oh yeah. And apply only have this apply function, uh, this uh, star uh, with, uh, with the arrows. Okay. Uh, uh, this function. Yeah, yeah, right, right. But here, uh, here is, uh, here is, uh, here is defined as a separate uh, type class, just one function. So you can you can combine them uh, in, in like a more more uh, granular way. Okay. Uh, for for me for me, uh, uh, pure script was uh, very good to understand uh, this whole hierarchy because they defined it so 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 nice. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And they 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 always uh, define function with a real name, and then they they say, okay, the infix for the apply is this. So it's also it's easier to understand when you see like the real name. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, Roger that. Okay. Right. So now uh, when we have this uh, like a basic uh, implementations, like just fake, but uh, we can use. Uh, now, now this will compile, though, is the point. Now, now this will compile, yeah. Uh, so uh, we, need to, uh, we need to return, we have this A, which is, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, our, our, uh, our value. So we need to uh, check if this value is something that we want or something we, we don't want. 
Yeah, okay, right, because we're trying to now parse like specific classes of characters as opposed to just any character. Yeah, so uh, we can call uh, this f a. Oh, if, okay. Just... Yeah, okay, so let me, let me see if I can come up with this, right? So if f a, that means like we got this a passed the f test, like it's one of the legal characters that we're looking for. So, um, Oh yeah. Uh, remember, oh. remember that uh, we we need to return uh, a, a, a instance of a parser, the, the complete yeah. parser. So, so we, we must say, okay, this is a parser. Uh, but okay, then I guess we need to do a, a tuple of. Uh, but we, we must define this as a, as a function. Yeah, I'm lost, I guess. All right, you're gonna have to show me this one. So uh, uh, we are defining this uh, as a, uh, this parser. Uh, uh, how, how can we can construct uh, the parser? We must supply this, uh, uh, this uh, function. Yeah, right, okay, so. Well, okay, well, so now here's the part where I thought I maybe was ready. So F, F returns true, so now we can do, um, we can do write A comma, um, I don't know what, what the rest is. How did we do the rest before? Oh, X is, yeah, I'm not too, too sure to be honest. Uh, in this case, uh, we are just uh, putting the our value inside. But why did we give back all of s? So, uh, to to create to create a parser, we must uh, create a function. Just just build it, uh, a, a new function. So I uh, here I'm cre just creating uh, defining a new function. Yeah, that part I get. I guess what I'm stuck on is like, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. But uh, uh, we don't want to use uh, the state. We are, uh, in, in, in this case, uh, uh, we are not using the state, we are just injecting uh, our value here. So on line 10, we gave back right X and then the whole rest of the string except for the one we just used. So. So I'm, what I'm confused on is here, why are we giving back the whole string, including A? Oh, uh, because the chopping the head off already happens in any char? Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, this A uh, is a character that we get from, from the any char. Oh. And, uh, and why is that? Uh, this, is any, this is any char. Yeah, right. So uh, this A will be the head of the string because any child will just extract the first character. After that, uh, in this function next P, uh, we will have the instance of this character. This will be the character, really. And with this character, we are saying, okay, uh, this character is okay. We will create another parser and just put this value inside. As a result, yeah. Okay. So if if you execute uh, this parser, it will give you uh, this result. It's for uh, you. You can supply here whatever you want. You will always get uh, this character as, as as a result. This right uh, right a. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is and this is why this thing is defined here because with the pure A, we will just put A here. Oh, uh, I need else. Uh, but ho oh, whoops. Else is not going to return something with left, I guess. It, where, where is the part where we say, like, sorry, that character is not one of the acceptable characters according to the F function? I, uh, I, uh, I want to write this here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. 
So this is also instance of a parser, which returns left. Yeah, cool. Okay, all right. I'm with you now. But uh, I made a mistake, something. Uh, sorry. I must return a parser here. What I missed. This is the same thing. Uh, string, another string. Oh. I'm not returning the, the, the tuple. The parentheses are, are yeah, this is right. Wait, so, what was the, oh. I put uh, this parentheses uh, here, so yeah. It doesn't yeah, make sense. yeah, yeah, roger that. Okay. And <clears throat> uh, when we write the, uh, the, <clears throat> the function, that's good. Uh, definition for pure. And, and why is pure? Because we are not changing anything. We are just uh, uh, putting the value inside. So <clears throat> what is the uh, pure implementation for a maybe? What do you think? Ooh, okay, we're getting pretty far beyond what I'm clearly understanding, but I, is it just, I guess? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's just. You, we are just putting the value inside. Okay. And uh, this is why uh, I can write this as pure A. Because it's just putting the, the value inside the parcel. Uh, you can think of, uh, of uh, this kind of uh, definition. Uh, you're not changing the, the, the how parcel is, uh, is uh, what uh, this parcel is. Uh, so, this parser will, will not parse anything. It will just uh, take the, the state that you give them, give him, and uh, just uh, return. Oh, the oh yeah. So, and okay. this is why it's called pure. It's, it's, you, you're just putting the value inside. You, you know this is the, the, the value. Yeah, I know what is what value. Uh, uh, this value that you want to put inside. A? And yeah, any A. Yeah. So well, no, not, I mean, not any A, right? It has to, it has to, like F has to tell me true in order for it to be the. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. In, in, in case of this function. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, if yeah. You, if you look, uh, if you look just. Oh, the, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah. When we're talking about pure, yeah. Yeah. And I will just uh, uh, return to this one. I noticed you did pure down there, yeah. I, I, I don't write return because it's, it's really pure is uh, coming from applicative, not from monad. Yeah, return is from monad, right? Yeah, so uh, the, the return here uh, works uh, the same because pure and return is the, the, the same function. Okay, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, I saw that's how you had defined it. Okay. Okay, so I, I think we should pause at this point so that I can watch this again and experiment and, and have good, clear understanding the next time we, we talk about this kind of stuff. Cool, does, cool. Yeah. Does that sound good? Or is this a good, is this a yeah, good yeah. point? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, and next time, uh, maybe you can, you, uh, you can say what, what would you like to, to see. And... Okay, sure. Yeah, okay, sure. That sounds good.
as a before we started here, I, I followed a YouTube video that was di different from this because here we were like building the parser from the beginning, right? Which was very, very instructive. And then the YouTube one I did was more like using a using the existing parsec. And so I I might be interested. I, I commented a bunch of questions into that one too. But I, I think I'll actually be able to answer most of them myself based on what we did uh, today. Uh, sorry, there, there is this. Um... Oh, it's so many channels. Uh, <laughs> do you know on, on which channel? Is... Uh, stuff I posted today was in Casper Colab, yeah. Oh, it's here. Yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't see it. Uh, in oh, that so, one. Uh, yeah, I, I was I was just skipping to to, uh, to through this video, and uh, you you will see uh, these uh, uh, these char functions. Uh, here, uh, this char function. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, I, I, uh, the, the next step I, I wanted to show you is the, is the char function. It's really, uh, uh, it's it's a uh, it's uh, this satisfy. Uh, so let, let's define the char. Oh yeah. Oh right, right, right. So we're going to combine any char and satisfy here, to make one. Uh, yeah, we are already using any char, so we just need to say satisfy. Oh yeah, and then the and then the f is going to be like a function that only returns true, f takes in one character and only returns true for that character or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's- Yeah, okay, char c, right. So it's gonna be satisfy, and then satisfy takes in um, a- But we can, we, can partially, we, can, we can partially apply uh, equals here. Oh yeah, satisfy equals c, equal equals c. Yeah. This is like beautiful. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. And, 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 and that's it. We, we have a parsec. And, and so this is, that comes like if we're you, so this is our parsec that we're building, but like the one that comes with Haskell or whatever, the uh, text yeah. parsec or the, it has yeah, this function right there. Yeah. It's the same. Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah uh, the, the parsec has more, more complicated structure, but uh, you can say, okay, I will, I will use uh, identity monad uh, on the result. And uh, uh, and my uh, my state will be string, and you will get the same uh, uh, the same type for a parser. So your your char your char uh, type will be the same uh, in this example and in the parser. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So this. Yeah. So let's let's pause here then. Um, and then I don't know. Like, do you want to do this again in a week? Like next Friday? Yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay. Awesome, man. Yeah. That's that's really great. Thank you.